crew to be the winner in a 9A triumph. Tigers taking the first game today 10 to 2. Five spot in the third inning. Riley Bertram coming through with a two run single. And some big moments in that ball game as the hitting was clutch for the Clemson team. That's a two run double by Will Taylor as part of a five run six inning. Back in the third inning, Nathan Hall, his first career homer in a Clemson uniform, a three run blast. Clemson riding the two big innings onto a 10 to 2 victory for win number nine on the season. So Georgia State tries to avoid the sweep. Cameron Jones again leads off in right field. Max Ryerson, the DH, big power threat. Matt Ruiz, the shortstop, bats third. Mize at third base, the cleanup hitter. Strickland moves to left field for game number two on this Saturday. Boynton at first. Hynek behind the plate. Pearson and Donahoe round out the starting lineup for fourth year head coach Brad Stromdahl who saw his team's heartbroken last night and then Tigers the eight run victory earlier today Caden Grice second time on the hill this season for the big left hander of course a first baseman also for this Tiger team you see the numbers so far in limited work his head coach will tell you he loves Caden Grice the hitter but thinks on the mound is maybe where his future is in the game at the next level. You no, know, when you talk to professional scouts, they love him on the mound. Obviously, you have this big 6'5 frame, 250 pounds, and an arm that really, really works. He also has a big sweeping, breaking ball that can be very effective if he throws it for strikes, especially against left-handed hitter speed, but there's only one lefty in the lineup today for the Georgia State Panthers. When they scrimmage Eric Backage umpires and he says from his perspective behind the plate <laughs> just watching the explosion off the release of Caden Grice is something to see and he makes 94 miles an hour appear like 104 no, because just, he's releasing it you know, that 60 foot 6 inches is more like you know 55 feet. First pitch of 546 of game number two Jones. One for three in our game earlier today scored one of their two runs in the fourth when they answered five in the fifth diving stop Blackwell deep in the hole but a fast man running and an infield hit to start things out in the nightcap. So Jones second hit in the series. We've talked about his ability to steal bases he did get thrown out. In the in the first game today but uh, he is 14 of 17 on the season. Well placed ground ball and Blackwell really made a good good play at that. Cooper Engel back behind the plate gunning down both runners who attempted a steal for Georgia Tech in the opening game. Strike one and nothing on Max Ryerson. I saw his first start. And uh, I thought he pitched really well only two innings but he pitched well and got ahead of ahead of hitters as he's done here today so far. And when he can do that and then throw that big sweeping curveball can be very effective. Ryerson among the best in the nation 22 homers a year ago that gets away from Engel Jones heads to second it'll hold there. Wild pitch so. Just like Tristan Smith who started the opening game. Caden Grice sees a Panther in scoring position in the very first inning. Smith did not factor in the decision. Reed Garris credited with the win his first of the season. Joe Allen gets the save. That one gets away from Engel hmm. and down to third goes Jones. Let's see how they score it. That's pass ball. And a wild pitch and a pass ball enabling Jones after the infield hit to land on third still with nobody out and the count now two and two on Ryerson the DH yeah, two freebies don't like that much Ryerson a big threat here now certainly wants to put the ball in play here I think that just indicates how electric Caden Grice's stuff can be he just not only he just made it tough on Cooper Engel to Harness either one of those pitches. Payoff pitch with a man on third, swing and a miss. Off speed, 79 miles an hour. And 
There is the big sweeping breaking pitch, which I have referenced. Big difference in velocity between his fastball and his breaking pitch. That's an area where they were hoping Ryerson could improve this year as strikeouts. Mm. Outer edge on Matt Ruiz, strike one on him. Boy, that, that is a tough pitch to hit. Eight strikeouts of Panthers batters by Tiger pitching in the first game of the double header. Appeal to first. Yes, says Albert Martinez. Steve Sanders moving behind the plate for the nightcap. And Engle did a good job to not, oh, he did. not let that one get too far yeah, away. That was, that was a tough one to handle as well. Did a good job of keeping it around the plate so that the runner wasn't able to advance from third. Got him. 80 miles an hour. Back to back strikeouts after Jones got to third with no one yet to be retired. And you know what you see with this breaking pitch it's 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 late and has bite it's sharp it's just not tumbling in there it really has some bite really good spin rate up to Will Mize well, Caden does not seem to be bothered by that runner on third with nobody out two quick strikeouts Panthers managed just two hits in the opener and Grice a strike away from getting out of the inning and recording all three outs just by way of the strikeout. Uh, just a super job that time by Cooper Engel. He really had to work to get in front of that sweeping breaking pitch by Caden Grice. And he does. Mize won't even attempt to run to first. After the leadoff infield single and a run. Next on Behind the Series. In all my years of playing, man, that 22 draft was something special. If I hadn't seen it in person, I wouldn't have believed it. Where can I even start? The monster. It was scary good. The outlaw? Come on. The Philly, the Philly had beef with everyone. And by beef, I mean tender, juicy steak. It wasn't just a roster. It was a menu. The Subway Series, the greatest menu of all time. I'm getting home just to, hey, can we take a, hey, can I get a sandwich? Y'all ready for this? I brought the halftime show to Sam's house. I hope you at least use the Capital One Quicksilver card and earn 1.5% cash back. Hit it! <laughs> Don't even think about it. Percent is Chuck and the Chuck in. You know what I'm talking about. Halftime's over! Come on, I didn't get a chance to do my big finale, the Nance Dance. <laughs> Cam Canarella had his 14 game career beginning hitting streak come to an end of the opening ball game, but he was a factor as well. He leads things off in game number two. Cooper Engel and Will Taylor follow. Taylor DH'd in the opener. Now he's in left field. Amick the hero Friday night. Bertram Hall, Grice, pitching and batting today. Benjamin Blackwell a couple of hits in the first game on this Saturday and Max Starbuck who contributed both at the plate and in the field rounding out Eric Backage's starting line. Getting the call in game two came up on the losing end is last time out last weekend at Presbyterian pitched in the Saturday game four and two thirds innings allowed four hits three runs they were earned. Striking out six and walking one. Career ERA of 5.50 comes in this afternoon at 2 and 1, 2.84 on the season. Well, 2.77 as we list there, but fellow who's going to try to avoid the Panthers getting swept here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Well, I think what's most impress impressive about his statistical line is he struck out 15 and walked only two. Opponents are hitting just 178 against him so he's got good stuff fastball slider guy fastball is going to be up in the low 90s seems as if the only way you can keep cam canarella from getting it is to walk him, and he did walk three times but his hitting streak did come to an end 
Watson's fourth appearance, fourth start of the year. A freshman out of Hartsville, Canarella, finally off the first pitch that he sees. Canarella reached on three walks and scored a run in the opening game this afternoon, and that's going to get through the right side. So, right yep. after the 14 gamer ends, maybe he's starting another again. streak. Yeah, yeah, fastball down and in, and. That's what he does hit the ball where it's pitched. Able to get that bat head out front and take it into the four hole hit hard. Lead off man on. For Cooper Engel. Engelman's hit nine straight. One for three. In the first game and that. Is just foul. As Martinez, the first base umpire, gave a long look to Sanders, the home plate umpire. And at that point, Engel had not even really left the batter's box area. I'll tell you, between Canarella and Cooper Engel, been a two man wrecking crew for this Tiger offense. Each with five hits Friday night, first time since 1982. For a Tiger tandem, runner on the move, Canarella. Good piece of hitting behind him by Engel. And Canarella now at second base with one away. And a really good job by Donahoe at second base, not moving until he saw where the where the ball was hit. Many times that was a hit and run for the Tigers. Well executed. But uh, he did not move until he saw it. The ball past the hitter, so he's also singled and scored in the third. Really, three big hits in that opening game the two run single by Bertram, the three right. run homer by Hall, and then really Taylor's two run double. You get the impression kind of put the game away. Yep. There were other runs scored in that inning, but those were the three big strikes. Well, with that Clemson bullpen pitching so very, very well the last couple of days. You get an eight run lead, you're you're pretty solid. You think about it, the Tiger bullpen closed the door with their team down eight to two. Right. After four and a half innings on Friday. And they Close the door with their team up five to two and Georgia State threatening and then unblemished the rest of the way. Yeah, Reed Garrison was just outstanding today. Canarella at second. Taylor, center field, Pearson on the run, deep and gone. Will Taylor stays hot. That'll be home run number two on the year. Give him nine batted in and the Tigers strike first. That ball was well hit. Taylor let it get deep. Looked like a slider on the outer third of the plate. And again, Taylor let it get deep and then he drove it to right center field. And the ball is carrying pretty well today. He knew that he got all of that one. Really good swing. Two RBIs in the first game on a double. Now two here on the home run. Well, we talked in the first game, and I truly believe this. The more at bat Taylor gets with, you know, consistent at bats without being hurt, without having to sit out for a while, the better he's going to be. Billy Amick. Two for five with a couple batted in in the first contest. Looped into left center field. That'll get down for a base hit. Hammock getting another start at first base and keep hitting like that. It's going to be hard to get him out of there. Now that was, he got jammed a little bit. I'm not sure if there was a catcher's interference there. It sounded was, like an yeah. additional yeah. sound. I don't know if we can get a replay on that, but that was, uh, 
yeah, there, it felt like he the bat hit the catcher's glove before he got the ball and and, and placed it into left field. It, man, had he not hit the glove, maybe that would have been out of here. Swing and a miss by Bertram. Watson. 15 career victories trying to get his third of the season. He also has 12 saves. Uh, that's really a good career. 12 saves and 15 victories for a program. That'll get it done. Bertram got the scoring going in game one this afternoon with a two run single in the third. Tiger's second baseman, two for nine in the series. Two and one the count. Tiger's trying to get this lineup to where every batter is a tough out, which obviously is the desire for every team every year. But right now you can clearly see who's hitting and who's not. And of course, some illness and injury has had an impact. Playable for Pearson in center. That's out number two. Well, you're exactly right, Pete. I mean, to, to have a, a lineup up and down that has no holes where, where you say, okay, we're going to pitch around this guy so we can get to this guy. Uh, it makes a big difference. Nathan Allbats with two away and Amick at first. So the guy at first and the guy at the plate, their first home runs as Clemson Tigers in this weekend series. The walk off grand slam for Amick Friday night, the three run blast, which helps set a tone in the third inning in game one this afternoon. Well, just one of a number of freshman contributors on this club for Clemson. Fister and Ruiz will touch the bag. That does it for the Tigers here in the home first. There are all kinds of products in this world things that make life easier or more fun. But New York Life's product is different. It's 12,000 experts whose responsibility is to be there, to guide you through the happiest and most difficult times. People who know the most valuable things in life aren't things at all. This is our product. This is what we do. The three for me only at Chili's serves up bottomless drinks, bottomless chips and salsa, and a classic old timer with cheese and fries for just $10.99. Hey, it's three for me, not three for us. It's my $10.99, it's my three for me. Hey, uh-uh, get out of here. Nope. Ooh, I can whack hands all day. This Chili's three for me is the best $10.99 you can eat. How irresistible are cheesy crackers? Year four guiding Georgia State for Brad Stromdahl. Keep in mind he took over during the pandemic, so maybe that is stunting a bit of the growth. Hopes to build the same kind of power with the Sunbelt Conference School that he did at NAIA, Georgia Gwinnett, when he started the program in that college for the NAIA team in the Atlanta area. Former Georgia State assistant before he went over to Georgia Gwinnett. He's also coached at Central Michigan. And he comes from the Napa Valley of California. That's Caden Grice, who got the three outs in the top of the first all on strikeouts. So you've got a guy from the northern end of the San Francisco Bay in one dugout, and the fella right there on the right, Eric Backage, the Tigers head coach from San Jose area originally, from the south end of the San Francisco Bay area. Pretty interesting that. Guys coaching in Atlanta and Clemson. 
growing up not far from each other out there in Northern California. One and two the count on the leadoff hitter Dylan Strickland. Hitting fifth in their order. Four consecutive strikeouts for the big left hander Grice. Just keep attacking the zone big man. Boy, look at that arm side run. Pete that ball had to move six inches. They've got Grice on a pitch count today probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 and you see where he's at so far. Wave and a miss on the first pitch delivered to the slugging first baseman Luke Boynton. If that was a, a, an appropriate description that was a wave. <laughs> Didn't really want to commit but he ended up having to. Boynton four of his last 15. Three of six on the weekend doing his damage last night. Three hits two of them home runs. Came to them from Northwest Florida State Community College, but grew up not far from their downtown Atlanta campus out in Marietta. And two and two the count. Three and two. Grice, third year in the Clemson program. Start at Riverside High. Just outside of Greenville, of course, his senior high school was the pandemic season. Five consecutive strikeouts, and you can understand why his head coach says his best part of his game for his future may be on the hill. Mm -hmm. Well, again, and he's also a really competitive kid, doesn't back down. Can Pitch his way out of trouble. Gets it. Gets his sign, gets on the rubber, and delivers a pitch. No messing around. First plate appearance in the series for Cole Hynek, the catcher, came on as a defensive replacement. You know, if, in the old days, you might see a guy step out a couple of times here. Can't do that anymore. Nope. One and two as he tried to get him to chase. Tiger pitching, striking out eight Panthers in the first game of this doubleheader. Grice, five. All five outs that he's recorded at this point. Heineck stays alive. Guy pitching for Georgia State today, Ryan Watson, is 6'3", but gives up <laughs> several inches to a guy pushing 6'7". Count evens 2-2. Two and two. And now three and two. Not sure what that pitch was. Only 85 mile an hour. It was not a breaking pitch. Unusual release there. First time he's gotten somebody looking. Caden Grice is on a roll. Six retired in a row. All by way of the strikeout. from State Farm. We have to know. Yeah, these are State Farm pajamas. No, what if we have to talk to somebody about our policy, but it's late at night? Call us 24-7. Great, because what if someone still calls his mom for everything? We'll walk you through everything. At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Oh, yeah, mom, everything's great. Not my mom. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
Call or click to get a quote today. The neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good old days. It's not like the good, it's not not like like the good, good old days. days. Stop parroting everything. Instead, drink a Red Bull and think for yourselves. Since when do you dictate what we do? Exactly. You're not the boss of us. Power to the people! Ah, well. Individuality often complicates things. Red Bull gives you wings. I did when the mood don't feel right. Wayless, I've been feeling wayless. Look at me, I'll change it right before me. SC Johnson. Eric Package's team riding their second four game winning streak of the season, so trying to get their best run if they can get the doubleheader sweep today. You notice the mustache on the Tigers head coach. You may notice it on several players and staff members, even though the team has a no facial hair policy, but this is mustache March and they're doing so to raise awareness for the fight against ALS. There's much more information on the Clemson website. This is being done in conjunction with East Carolina's baseball program to honor the Late Keith LeClaire, the former coach of the Pirates, back as his coach, guy who played for former Tiger coach and now administrator Jack Leggett at Western Carolina. Lost a number of years ago at a very young age to ALS, and the Tigers doing their part to try to help in the fight against ALS. You may want to check that out at ClemsonTigers.com or go to Clemson Baseball social media, and you can find out more about it and how you can help. And that's why you see this Clemson team from the head coach on down sporting the mustaches well it's been a phenomenal start for Caden Grice six straight strikeouts now he stands in trying to make an impact in this series at the plate his first appearance in the batter's box against Georgia State pitching and the count goes two and two as a rule, you'll see most pitchers and programs really throw a lot of off speed stuff to Caden Grice, but not the case here. All fastballs. Here comes another one. Grice has now gone down 16 times on the season on strikes after nearly 100 a year ago. Well, and you know that that ball is well outside of the strike zone. He's got to have a little bit better plate discipline there. Benjamin Blackwell may have gotten turned to the right direction. A couple of base hits in the opening game. Now three of his last 18, two for eight in the series. But the first of those two hits was one that was a tough hop for the third baseman Mize. Sometimes those are the breaks you need to yep. get things going in the right direction. There's a flare to right. That's going to get down for a base hit. Blackwell thinking two bobbled by Pearson and Benjamin Blackwell into second base to start things out. As far as his hitting day goes in game number two and a one out man in scoring position for the Tigers on their fourth hit so far. And it's a slider up and away and Blackwell lets it get deep and driving into right center field bobbled by Pearson. Jones able to recover it, but no error charge there. I think that uh, Blackwell was going to easily coast into second base regardless of the bobble. Four doubles now for Benjamin Blackwell in this 2023 campaign. Max Starbuck delivered his first hit of the year in game number one this afternoon. There. Off speed for strike one. Yeah, there's a good slider. He had thrown many sliders, but the ball that Blackwell hit was a slider. Starbuck his first hit and first run batted in in the sixth inning of our first game. Getting another start this weekend in place of Blake Wright, Tiger third baseman out with illness. Ruiz, nice job moving left. Blackwell stands at third now with two away. Good job, 
And the second base bag could have been an impediment to yeah. the shortstop Ruiz I agree. based on where he was moving. He did Ken not. Cantarella had a 14 game hitting streak stopped in the first game today. Watson going over to talk to our third base umpire John Mary. Huh. But Cantarella opened up the second contest with a leadoff single and came home on the Taylor two run homer in the first. Fourteen batted in on the season for the freshman out of Hartsville. Team lead in that category coming into the day. You talk about those two out hits, those two out RBIs are huge. Tigers stranded eight in the first game. Last night in the series opener, they left 14 on base. Well, the good thing about doing that, Pete, is you're getting on base at least. Yeah. <laughs> it's but that's uh, that's chicken only versus egg theory. But yeah. then you got to deliver all the way through. That's right. You're only doing half the job. Got to complete the job. 3-0 on the Tiger freshman center fielder, taking all the way, and the count goes three and one. Engel would be next. Two out opportunity here for Canarella. Cooper Engel having a good weekend series. 86 miles an hour count goes full. Yeah, it took a little something off of that one, Pete. I wonder if, sure. if that was a change up or he just didn't throw it quite as hard. 3 2. Two out walk puts him on first and third. You got to wonder if as that game went on last night, if Engel realized. The number of hits that the guy in front of him in the order Cantarella was getting, and uh -huh. then he would come through and thinking, you know, <laughs> yeah. staying toe to toe with him. Well, they were remarkable. 1982, Jimmy Key and Brooke Shoemake each had five hits in a game for Clemson. That was not matched until last night when Cantarella and Engel were able to combine for 10 hits, five each. Those guys are happy with five hits in a series. Engel, good guy to have up there. First and third, two men out, throw behind Blackwell. Engel, a 331 career hitter. And so good at Moving the ball all over the place, especially with men in scoring position. Yeah, he handles the bat very well, Pete. Can hit the ball to all fields. Obviously has some power. Very short, compact swing. Love his approach at the plate. Watson gave up the two-run homer in the first, trying to escape the second without any further damage. Good base runner at first, Canarella, but he stays put, and the count's two and one. And there's another changeup. From Watson. Canarella swiped a bag in the first game. He's eight out of nine in the season. Man at third, Blackwell, though it's kind of a moot point here. The Tigers' best base stealer this season. It'd be interesting now with two strikes to see if Canarella doesn't get on the move. Deuce is wild in a 2 nothing game. Canarella on the move, grounded up the middle into center field. Blackwell scores easily. Canarella makes the turn. 3 nothing game, and the Tigers again have him first and third with two away. Boy, the top of this Clemson order continues to produce. Just an outstanding job. Eleven batted in now on the year for Engel. Another hit for him. That's seven in the series. Mm -hmm. 
Will Taylor. Hot hitter stands in. Nine for his last 21 at his second homer of the season. His first time up in this game. A two out hits, Pete. Hit it over the wall in right center field. About 380 feet away. Wonder if you'll see that slider from Watson again. That's a pitch that he was able to hit out. Mm. Good cut on a 93 mile an hour yeah. fastball. Yeah, he was on that one. It was fouled straight back. Taylor continuing to evolve, getting the start in game two of this doubleheader at left field. He was the DH in game number one. Runner on the move, Engel will not draw a throw. He'll jog into second base. Now the Tigers with two in scoring position and two away. Cooper Ingles first steal of the season. Yeah, once once Taylor got down 0 and 2. Coach back says hey, we're going to start to run or maybe do a little first and third situation possibly a first and third steal but at least get things moving a little bit here. Eric Bankett said his team was not going to pace itself during the doubleheader. They were coming out on the attack. And we saw that with some aggressive base running in game number one. Packers right back at it here in game number two. Yeah. I'll tell you, it has turned into a beautiful afternoon here. That sun is shining brightly. Yeah, they did the doubleheader today because of a bad forecast for Sunday. So everything worked out. Little chopper. That's trouble. Taylor's speed has a chance to beat it out. He will. One run came home. The bad throw allows Engel to come around. Tigers add two more, and the lead is 5 0. E5 on the throw that allows Taylor to get to second. He's got a third RBI in the game. And the Tigers have another crooked number. Well, that, that was trouble <laughs> as soon as it was hit. Really tough play for Mize, especially against the speedy Taylor. You can see it's topped almost like a swinging bunt. And that's the play where you've got to tell your third baseman you have to feel like you're throwing it towards the outfield side because your momentum is taking you down the first baseline. Got to feel like you're throwing it to the right of the first baseman or that's the result. 12 RBIs in the season for Taylor. Five in this doubleheader. <laughs> Amick. You know, this is Ryan Watson. He's, you know, a veteran pitcher. Got really good numbers. Been around a while. Clemson coming out doing a really good job against him. Putting the ball in play. Tiger only the first one. baseman with a single his first time up. Yeah, only the one strikeout. And uh, just running the bases aggressively and making things happen. Just one RBI in that infield hit for Taylor. The Aaron throw by Mize, the third baseman, allowing the second run to come home and Taylor to get to second. But a five RBI Saturday so far for the man standing on second base. That time, Heineck, I think he might have lost the balls that was coming to him from the pitcher. And yeah. as a result, Taylor goes to third. Either that or he was crossed up. And you've seen communication between uh, Heineck and Watson several times when a runner has gotten to second base and I assume to clarify the signs. 3 1 again first and third for Clemson with two away here in the second inning brings up Riley Bertram second batter to reach on a free pass here in inning number two.
Bertram flied out to the center fielder Pearson his first time up. Had a two run single in the third inning of game number one. Two for nine. Two for ten in this series. Actually showing bunt for a base hit. Watson off the mound what from his play. knees, able to throw him out. That was a nice play. Ooh. You almost think he might have let it go foul, but down five, nothing with a man charging down the third base line. He probably couldn't afford to do that. Instead, Watson taking matters into his own hands for the Tigers add three more and have a big lead early. Everyone's go to bra looks a little different. Save on your favorites from Vanity Fair. Coles. The three for me only at Chili's gets you a bottomless drink, bottomless chips and salsa, an entree like a cheeseburger and fries, the chicken bacon ranch quesadilla, or a steak with loaded mashed potatoes starting at just $10.99. Wait a minute, that can't be right. Rewind. So you get a drink, all the chips and salsa you can eat, a giant entree, and a side starting at just $10.99? Oh, someone's gonna get in trouble for this one. This Chili's three for me is the best 10.99 you can eat. Here it goes. Um, uh, so I, I talk to my plants like they're babies. Do you? Yes, I do, don't I? Oh, my little babies. Oh, you need some water, babies. You uh, hey, you don't here. have to get that Thanks. personal to get the State Farm personal price plan. Like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or How irresistible are cheese and crackers? Cheese and crackers. Uh -oh. Want it, need it, cheese it. Over McWhorter Stadium, Clemson softball has completed a 9-0 five-inning victory against Jacksonville. Third win in as many games this weekend and their invitational still to come. A game against UNCG. Top of the third, Caden Grice back out there. Told you he's probably going to be limited to around 50 pitches today. Grice, six batters retired in order all by way of the strikeout. But Dalton Pearson, the center fielder, gets ahead in the count here, two and one. Yeah, you had a runner at third base there in the first inning with no one out. And Caden proceeded to strike out the side. Pearson two for four last night, over three in the first game today. Engel did what he could do. Yeah. But give Pearson some credit. There's a ball that just up and he showed some patience. Stays alive, 91 mile an hour fastball. But again, as Eric Backage was saying, everything looks about 10 miles per hour faster out of the release of his 6 7 left hander, Caden Grice. Center field that'll snap the string of strikeouts in order at six but now seven in a row retired by Grice and it's one away here in the third. Got to let your teammates play a little bit too Pete then strike them all out that's not democratic. Caden Grice can appreciate Cam Canarella in center wanting to be a part of it Grice and his Clemson <laughs> careers plays in center field. He has may look over to first base and. Acknowledge Billy Amick would like to see an infielder throw him a ball on a grounder. <laughs> Jesse Donahoe came on as a late defensive replacement in game one of this double header. <laughs> Left handed hitting sophomore out of Columbus, Georgia, went to Calvary Christian. I'll tell you, I would not be real enthused about. 
if I'm left-handed facing Grice, he, he just so big and got that that big breaking uh, curveball, and then he can set it up off a 90-plus mile an hour fastball. But Donahoe able to go the other way. Second hit so far in game two for the Panthers. They've got a one out base runner. Just a great job by Donahoe taking a pitch that's up and away and just serving it, letting it get deep and serving it in or down the left field line. Top of the order, Cameron Jones began the game with an infield hit, made his way to third on a wild pitch and a pass ball with nobody out. Grice so responded by striking out the next three hitters in the opening inning. Little number, Grice off the hill, only played a first. Two away. And Donahoe moves up to second. Well, we saw Watson make a nice play to close out the Tigers in the second inning. Decent bouncing off the mound. Yeah, showing a little bit of. Athletic. Chase down the ball by yeah. Grice. The athletic ability and Gaden bounced off there very nimbly. It's up to Max Ryerson, who was the first of six straight strikeout victims against Grice. Takes a big rip and a miss. Guy who can get Georgia State on the board in a hurry. Yes, sir. Preseason all Sun Belt, third team, all American. 22 home runs a year ago and a guy back in the Palmetto State although far from home grew up in Conway over near the Grand Strand. Well, again credit Cooper Engel. Tough pitch to corral tough pitch to get your outside knee outside of. 0 2 pitch to the Panthers DH did he hold up. And it's ball one. Yeah, he did. He held up and Cooper Engel taking a beating back there. Ryerson two for seven on the weekend. Stands in five of his last 12. One two pitch with Donahoe on second. Count evens. Yeah. Just a little bit late breaking his hands on that last one. That's that last pitch didn't allow his arm to catch up. Could be the last batter for Grice. With the righty waiting on deck and a pinch count of 50. And if it is, not a bad way to end it. Second time he's able to get Ryerson. Seven strikeouts of the nine that he retires. Five nothing Tigers. Let's do it. Come on, Dad, get me. At Ally, we're helping millions save more for the things that matter most to them. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an ally. I'll get back to work. Hey. <laughs> Everyone's go-to bra looks a little different. Save on your favorites from Vanity Fair. Kohl's. Don't worry. It happens to the best of us. It does? It happens to surgeons. Judges. Overruled. Airport Grand Crew. Game show contestants. Bermuda Triangle. Megan Trainer. Bowlers. It even happened to your little cousin Timmy. That doesn't even make sense. That doesn't matter. Thanks, Grandpa. The three for me only at Chili's gets you a bottomless drink, bottomless chips and salsa, an entree like a cheeseburger and fries, the chicken bacon ranch quesadilla, or a steak with loaded mashed potatoes starting at just $10.99. Wait a minute, that can't be right. Rewind. 
So you get a drink, all the chips and salsa you can eat, a giant entree, and a side starting at just $10.99? Oh, someone's gonna get in trouble for this one. This Chili's 3 for me is the best $10.99 you can eat. Tigers coming up here in the bottom half of the third inning. Nathan Hall, his first big swing for the Tigers in that opening game. Well, you can see that Ryan Watson fastball riding up and in on Nathan Hall. Now the stat sheet that we have that was updated prior to game one. Shows Hall did not have a home run coming into that contest. The scoreboard, though, shows two, so I apologize if. I got that wrong. Mize, low throw, and Boynton can't scoop it out of the dirt. And a leadoff man on in the third. One of those throws that you. Just you, you got plenty of time. He has to hesitate to get a good hop. And almost always when there's a bad throw, Pete, it's footwork. And if you watch here, Mice does not have his shoulders aligned with his target. A little bit open. Christ. His day may be done on the mound, but as a pitcher, he was inserted in the lineup. Went down on strikes in the second. E5 is what allowed Hall to get to first. Skied in the air. Mize with the shortstop Ruiz closing fast, and Ruiz puts it away in foul territory for out number one. Well, there you see a great example of, of good communication between the third baseman Mize and the shortstop Ruiz. Mize has to go almost straight back, and Ruiz is it has an angle. So again, he's got a better perspective on catching that foul ball. Yeah, so often you see that, and on the other side, the second baseman often calls off the exactly. first baseman. Well, Nathan Hall listed on the most updated stat sheet on Clemson's website with just the one home run, so that was his first career home run as a collegian in the opening game. Hit his first time up for Benjamin Blackwell, three in the double header. After he came into Saturday, one of his last 16, the Tigers shortstop trying to Push the batting average back north up in the 300 range. Well, he got off to a hot start as you mentioned earlier. Going through a bit of a struggle right now and so much of baseball is mental Pete. Boy you just got to keep battling and again focus on are you making hard contact. That's a fair ball just inside the bag beyond the reach of Mize. Hall will be waived. He'll come around and score. Trouble picking it up for Strickland in left field. Into third goes Blackwell. Let's see how they score it. Another hit for Benjamin Blackwell. Then he comes through with another run batted in. Well, again, Blackwell has really responded here the last couple of ball games, and it, it got started with the the ball that ate up Mize at third base in that first game and since then they haven't been able to get him out. 11 batted in now for Blackwell. A third error in the game. They'll say that allows Blackwell to move to third. For the Tigers shortstop. Now has five doubles on the season. Visit of the mound. That's the pitching coach, Chad Bell. So yeah. Ben Blackwell, though, you talk about a guy who was scuffling, had that ball that he chopped to 
Mize, Mize at third right. base in the first game yep. to get his first hit, added another hit. Now he's got two more in the nightcap. And just like that, you got to feel like his perspective is much different. You know, I don't feel like Watson is is throwing that that poorly. Yeah, he's pitched reasonably well. Yeah, it's just given, that you know, seven hits. A number of them were ground balls that have gone through the infield. A couple balls that were dumped into the outfield. Defense is not helping helped him. They've committed three errors already in this ball game. Still just one out. Max yeah. Starbuck showing bunt. Tigers might have had a safety squeeze on. Right. Blackwell good speed at third. Six nothing now our scores. The Tigers able to add another run after getting two in the first and three in the second. And who knows they could add on here in the third. It is a safety squeeze. The flip home by Got Boynton. Him. Nice play. The tag applied by the catcher Heineck. So two away and now Starbuck at first. Really nice play by Boynton. I love that though. I mean, it, you know, a little small ball, but just a little hard. And you saw Boynton do a really nice job with that underhand flip. And most of the power from that flip came from his legs. He didn't, you know, bring his hand or his arm way back behind his 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 back. Uh, he, he just kept running and got his power from his legs and made a perfect throw. Cam Canarella walked his last time up, singled and scored in the first. And his 14 game hitting streak come to an end in game number one. And up six nothing. I don't necessarily mind in that situation. A trying a safety squeeze and B even though you could see the first baseman got a good jump on the right ball after it was bunted. Yeah, bring your runner from third base. Why not continue to put the pressure on Be aggressive. Yes. Yeah. I mean this Clemson team's going to have success this year. It's going to be because they Make the other team feel uncomfortable when they're yeah. on the field. And they do a lot of that with their false breaks at first base, sec second base, and then the way they steal steal bases. But you know, yeah, play aggressive baseball. The bunt was just a little too hard, I think, Pete. Yep. Just missed. Two and one, the count of the Tiger freshman center fielder. He's got his batting average back up close to 450. He's off to a rough start <laughs> with his career. <laughs> he has been hitting right wow. out of the box. You're exactly right. From the very beginning, he swung the bat well and had a great approach. 2-1 pitch from Watson. 3-1. and one. And to think about it, within the first few weeks of his college career, he's had a five-hit game. Unbelievable. I mean, one thing for Engel, a junior, who <laughs> yeah. has been a really, a, had he not had the injury and Whatever health issues that, that he had in his first season probably would have gotten more notice early. Donahoe knocks it down, will not be able to recover. And here comes Cooper Ingle. I believe I just saw an error go up on the board. Starbuck moves up to second. Yeah, it was a tough play, but that's a play that, that should have been made. That's an error. Four errors already for mm. the Panthers. And, you and know, the when third you get, this inning. Yeah, the third you, this inning. Yeah, when you give a good team more than three outs in an inning, you're going to get hurt. And if they commit three errors in this inning and only give up three runs or one run, they will have been very, very fortunate. See if they are aggressive to try to get two men instead of one in scoring position and put the runners on the move here. Yeah, with two outs, I, I, I don't think so, especially with Starbuck out there. I don't think he's is that fast. Donahoe gets another chance and redeems himself. So he's through all that, Tigers end up with just 1-1, one, one, one run in the third. Head to the fourth, 6 nothing Clemson. In Alaska, the wild fish are plentiful, but the potatoes are lacking. So, Arby stepped in to pick up that slack. $5 crispy fish and fries. Arby's, we have the meat. Meet a future mom, a first-time mom, and a seasoned pro. 
This mom's one step closer to their new minivan. Yeah, you'll get used to it. This mom's depositing money with tools on hand. Cha-ching. And this mom, well, she's setting an appointment here so her son can get set up there and start his own financial journey. That's because these moms all have Chase. Smart bankers, convenient tools. One bank with the power of both. Chase, make more of what's yours. Mr. Clark, your daughter is a very good kisser. When you crave the uncomfortable, try new Spicy Pringle Scorchin'. Why is it your grocery order arrives the second you remember everything you forgot to order? Like, without fail! Who drank all the milk? Fresh groceries and more. Unlimited free delivery, Walmart Plus. Nice piece of work for Caden Grice, whose day is done. They had him on a pitch count. Gave up an infield single to lead off batter, and then he bared down. Six consecutive outs by way of the strikeout. He ended up retiring seven in a row from the first inning through the third. He was dealing today. Ends up with seven strikeouts in total. The last man he faced, he was able to K. And the slugger Ryerson that came in the third inning we presume since he was in the batting order as a pitcher he will simply stay in as a hitter for the rest of the way Nathan Dvorsky the freshman on second appearance in a Clemson uniform so the right hander you would suppose will be given an opportunity with a six nothing lead to go a long way. Fellow from outside of the Atlanta area in Swanee, Georgia, went to Lambert High. See his numbers so far and three strikeouts in his two innings pitched. Had a pretty good outing the other night, or last night. Chopper to third. Starbuck backing up, then fires across to retire the shortstop Ruiz for out number one. Clemson has contained to this point a potent lineup in the Saturday doubleheader. Two hits for Georgia State in the first game, just two so far. One of them an infield hit yeah. in the nightcap. Well, it, it, they showed how explosive they are last night. Or, yeah, they just. Clemson pitching has done a great job. Bertram, nice job on the backhand. And you have two veteran ball players up the middle for the Tigers. They're not. They're going to make most of the routine plays. Dvorsky quickly retiring the first two batters he faces. Dylan Strickland, one of the three Ooh. errors. In the bottom of the third, and that allowed a run to score when he couldn't pick up a ball. That Blackwell snuck inside of the bag down the third baseline. It was going to be a double anyway. It might have been an RBI double, but had Strickland been able to cleanly field it, perhaps I don't know if we get the runner to hold. And you know, Saul so, came around to score. Excuse me, Pete, but so often. Guys get two quick outs, and then they walk the next guy. They they lose focus a little bit, and it's something that. And as evidence, he goes full on a batter who went down on strikes his first time up, and was 0 for 2 Ooh. in the opener today. But a two-out walk for the left fielder for the Panthers. Interesting that there was, you know, they called a breaking ball there. They must have confidence in Dvorsky's breaking pitch thrown on a 2-2 on two -two and 3-2. It was often said that, you know, if you're going to throw a breaking ball on 2-2, two -two, you have to be willing to throw it on 3-2 as well. Here's Boynton 0 for 3 in the first game. Went down swinging against Grice. 
in the second inning. Dangerous batter though. A couple of home runs last night. 12 in 2022 he was top 10 in the Sun Belt Conference. That's it pretty well to right field high and deep and gone off the roof and over top of it of the hitting cages out in right field. Third home run of the series for Luke Boynton. It's a 6 2 game. The two out walks will get you in again. The two quick outs had two outs and five pitches and then a 3 2 walk to Strickland and then a, a fastball that's that's away Boynton with his great strength drove the ball and the ball is carrying today pretty well so that ball got out easily in fact it hit the, the roof of the and there goes another and where's one. that one gonna land crushed Cole Heineck the catcher Panthers go back to back they're within three So after Boynton hit his fifth home run of the season and third this weekend, Heineck running into one that might have gotten all the way to the softball stadium, his second of the year. Well, you got you got to like Dvorak coming back and throwing a strike right after giving up the home run, but there's a fastball that's inner third and about belt high, and Heineck just. <laughs> That ball was well hit. Got the fat, fat part of the bat on the ball. And I go back to the walk. That's that's the one that that you just kind of go, gosh, you know, you've got a chance to have a really quick inning. Maybe you lost focus for a split second. And all of a sudden you've got a guy on first and a very dangerous point in that at the plate. Dvorsky allowing his first two home runs of the season. And things get a little bit tighter here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Dalton Pearson stands in. Two men out, nobody on. Yeah, that looked. That one was not close. Yeah, it was really not what Dvorsky had in mind in yeah. delivering the first pitch to Pearson. Just a bit outside. <laughs> Almost a bit underground. Skied to left. Taylor and his patience paid off. That was way up there. Out number three in the inning for the Panthers. Couple of home runs. And it's now a 6 3 game. I was having challenges with my old bank. Lots of red flags. Yellow ones, too. Fees, penalties, unnecessary fees. Playing dirty. So I broke up with bad banking and moved on with SoFi checking and savings. Now I earn higher interest on all my money and pay no account fees. Feels good to get my money right. Banker disqualified. Break up with bad banking. Get up to 3.75% interest and earn up to $250 when you set up direct deposit. SoFi, get your money right. When there's real strawberries. Crunchy almonds. Smooth, yogurty clusters and crisp toasted flakes. She's happy to format it for you. Make what else can you do? Special K, do what's delicious. The three for me only at Chili's serves up bottomless drinks, bottomless chips and salsa, and a classic old timer with cheese and fries for just $10.99. Hey, it's three for me, not three for us. It's my 1099. It's my three for me. Hey, uh-uh, get out of here. Nope. Ooh, I can whack hands all day. This chili. Will Taylor now to lead off things here in the fourth inning. He's been crushing it this doubleheader. That was home run number two on the season, an oppo blast. When he came up in the first inning with a man on. The guy who has had himself a fine day, a couple of hits in the second game of this doubleheader. Now 10 for his last 22. He's got the batting average up near 350. Tiger left fielder in the second game. 12 batted in on the year. Five in the doubleheader, and why not? Little blooper into left to start things out 
in the fourth. Yeah, he fisted that one out there. Watson able to get up and in on his hands, but Taylor strong enough to dump it into left center field. Brings out the cleanup hitter and freshman first baseman Billy Amick, or rather the Tiger first baseman Billy Amick. Reached each time he's stepped into the box here in the nightcap. Singled in the first. Walked in the second. First pitch swinging. Nice That's dropping. a looper into left field. And another hit for Amick. It's amazing what a compelling two out walk off grand slam can do for your confidence. He's had himself a good Saturday. Two he more hits. Has. He's got four on the day. And that one off the end of the bat. Exit velocity of, of 84 mile an hour. So what hit real hard but certainly well placed and when you hit flat balls when you hit line drives got a good chance. Sets the table for Riley Bertram who's flied out to center and grounded out on a very nice play by the pitcher Watson. Close out the Tigers in the second after three runs had already scored. Trying to move up the runners at strike one. Now I like I like this play. I know a lot of people think that it's a it's a free out and and it it squelches the the chance of having a big inning. But uh, you know the defense has to make a play and so there, there's a lot of things could can happen there and and hopefully you got men on second and third and just one out. See if they stay with it. I think if there's anybody who coach will do this with would, would be with with uh, Bertram. I mean, he's a kid that he really, really knows. Brought brought it, brought him to Clemson with him from Michigan, and, and uh, it'd be interesting to see what he does here. Well, surprisingly. Bertram has yet to sacrifice this year swinging away with two strikes for a shortstop puts it away for out number one. Because you think at some point he's going to be the one to come through in fact. Tigers just two sacrifices so far yeah. on the year by Hall and Gerald. One away. Runners on first and second lights have come on here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. And speaking of Nathan Hall he stands in. First career homer in game number one. Good take. Reached on an E5 to lead off the third inning and later scored on the Blackwell double. Now, well, Taylor, he's not, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see him take off here with one out. Began the nightcap 35 of 42 on stolen bases already this season, playing their 16th game of the year. One one. Yeah, he was able to lay off that very same pitch earlier in this at bat. Good looking slider that starts over the outer third. And just on it, you know, you can't hit that with a eight eight foot pole. Just got to sit back and wait a little bit longer. Better recognition. Runners on base bluffed. Watson six strikeouts in four and two thirds against Presbyterian last weekend. Just one strikeout recorded so far today. Out of Sugar Hill, Georgia, just up 85 from downtown Atlanta. Good job by Heineck. Yep. You know, all those little plays are, are really vastly underrated by many, many baseball people. Or maybe they aren't baseball people if they underrate that play, but it's so it's such a big part of 
controlling a team. Don't want to give free bases, and there they go. Ooh. Runner broke Taylor, went to third, and the reaction by the catcher and the batter, I think each may have thought that it was a three ball pitch that was yeah. coming. So now yeah. it's three and two. Amic holds at first. So you got Amic over at first, you've yeah, got it, Taylor it, at third. And interesting that, that Amic didn't didn't go on that. So that was just a, a read steal from uh, Taylor. Amick didn't pick up on it soon enough. 3 2 pitch. And a swing and a miss. Could prove to be a very big strikeout right there. Watson trying to hang in this game and keep it a three run ball game now with two away. Raj on first and third. See that little boom, that little slider again. And again, first pitch of the at bat, Hall was able to lay off of that pitch, but. He was not able to identify it from then on. Taylor, by the way, now two for two on stolen bases this season. Good pitch. Caden Grice stays in the game as a DH. He's gone down swinging and also popped out to the shortstop. Still looking for that first home run here in 2023 after a dozen a year ago. Runner at first, A. McBluffing stays put. One and one now the count. Almost always, if they're going to go hard against Caden Grice, they try to go in on him. They don't want him to extend his arms. That's ripped past the diving Donahoe. Another run comes across. Hamick will make the turn, head to third, a two out RBI single for Caden Grice. This is second run bat into the season. Tigers build the lead back out to four runs. It looked like a, it wasn't his best fastball, 85 mile an hour. Exit velocity of 109 miles an hour. <laughs> Caden Grice has got some pop in his bat. I think that was a changeup and uh, uh, really not very well located over the in inner part of the, of the plate and Grice able to drive it into right field. Benjamin Blackwell. Couple of hits so far. RBI and a run scored. And he has a base hit. In his past four plate appearances final two. In the opening game of the doubleheader. And a pair of doubles so far today. In game number two. Eleven runs batted in among the team leaders. Came into the Saturday doubleheader, one for his last 16, but perhaps has gotten the ship righted. 1 1 pitch. There Little is. looper going to get down in center. Another hit, another RBI for Blackwell. Another run for the Tigers makes it an 8 3 game. Well, again, just not trying to do too much. All you need is a base hit to get that run in there. And he let that ball get nice and deep, drove it into center field. Good solid line drive. Two out hits, Pete. Really makes a big difference in a ball game. Grice and Blackwell delivering those. Ninth place batter in the order, Max Starbuck. Round out to short. And a fielder's choice. He reached back in the third inning. He was left stranded. Got his first hit of the season and his first run batted in in the opening game of the doubleheader. Ninety one. One and one now the count. Yeah. 
Starbuck getting another start at third. In for Blake Wright. Takes strike two. Wright dealing with an illness. So he will not have had an impact on this weekend series against the Panthers. Still got the velocity. That was yeah, 92 oh, miles an hour. He's throwing hard. He's given up 11 hits. Hard to believe. Four errors around him have not helped right. his cause. Tigers two in the first, three in the second. Single run in the third, and so far two here in the fourth. Starbucks stays alive. Several years in this Clemson program. And the count goes full. Dangerous batter on deck in the lefty hitting Canarello, so Watson may be facing his last batter of the day anyway. I believe so. And again, this is a situation where on any ball that's hit, if it's at all in the gap, gives a runner at first a great opportunity to come all the way around being Blackwell, and he's got good speed anyway. Heineck, the catcher, not sure what the issue is, but the athletic trainer will attend to him. So we will wait for a 3 2 pitch to Max Starbuck. Heineck hit that mammoth home run. Yeah. Ooh. After you know, Boynton hit the two run blast. And they've had three different catchers half. start for them, Pete. He, you know, this and, and is four big. play this yeah, weekend. Yeah. yeah. We've seen Hilton, Hudson. Heineck and Marchman behind the plate for the Panthers team. First and second, 3 2 pitch. Max Starbuck might feel like he's wearing a target. <laughs> Third time he's been hit by a pitch in this doubleheader. So the Tigers now have the bases loaded. Cam Canarella, the lefty hitter, coming up. Let's see if a move is made by Georgia State's head coach, Brad Stromdahl. Oh. And he's going to allow Watson to try to get out of this thing. I mean, you see him do that. I mean, that's just a great pitch. 91 miles an hour on the black. Got a lefty warming up in the bullpen, perhaps to face Ingle if mm -hmm. Watson can't get the left handed batting Canarella. And he gets ahead of him. Two strikes and nothing. Starbuck the lead at first. One and two. I just find it shocking that Watson has given up 11 hits already. It just seems like he's pitched better than that. At the bag, the shortstop Ruiz to retire the side. Tigers add two more. They've scored in each inning so far at lead eight to three. There are all kinds of products in this world. Things that make life easier or more fun. But New York Life's product is different. It's 12,000 experts whose responsibility is to be there, to guide you through the happiest and most difficult times. People who know the most valuable things in life aren't things at all. 
This is our product. This is what we do. The three for me only at Chili's serves up bottomless drinks, bottomless chips and salsa, and a classic old timer with cheese and fries for just ten ninety nine. Hey, it's three for me, not three for us. It's my ten ninety nine. It's my three for me. Hey, uh uh, get out of here. Nope. Ooh, I can whack hands all day. This Chili's three for me is the best ten ninety nine you can eat. Dad, look, us. This is uh huh. This isn't us, is it? When do we get so connected to our devices and so disconnected from each other? She's not answering. What? And when our phones have turned us into this, LT, what do you do when you're a company that sells them? We gotta fix this. It's time to find what we're missing. Join us in taking a break oh. from our devices. Take the phones down for five challenge for five days, five hours, or even just five minutes. Feels good. And let's find <laughs> us again. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Third pitcher in the game for the Tigers as we move on to the bottom of the fifth. Nick Clayton making his fifth appearance of the season. Clayton has been a Clemson starter. Who's out of the bullpen so far this season. And again, you just wonder here in the third and final game of a series. They'll try to let him work extended innings. Fourth year junior. Out of York, South Carolina, over near Rock Hill. Georgia State made things interesting with back to back home runs, a two run blast by Boynton, and then a mammoth solo clap by Cole Heineck in the top half of the fourth inning. After Clemson had built the lead to 6 0. But Tigers bounced right back, and they did that. In the first game as well. Clemson responding with two in the bottom half of the fourth. First appearance for Clayton since February 24th. A couple of weekends ago when he faced UCF. Jesse Donahoe. Getting the start at second base. His single in the top half of the third ended a run of seven straight retired by the starter Caden Grice who worked three innings. He was on a pitch count that's chopped through the right side to lead things off here in the fifth inning. Well, you got the ground ball but it was well placed. I don't know with the easy with the base hit in the four hole and the leadoff hitter again on the on the bases for the Panthers. Five hits in game number two for the Panthers. They had just two in the doubleheader opener. Cameron Jones, the right fielder, an infield hit against Grice to start things out in the first. Later grounded out to the Tiger pitcher. One inning of work to Vorsky. Gave up three runs on two hits and he walked a batter. But if they score it the way I think they will and early in the season they will give a starter credit if he pitches the first four innings instead of five. Off speed and a butte swing and a miss. So you see with, Jones. with Clayton what he's looking to do he's got you saw the slider there. And then he's got an 85 mile an hour sinker that goes down and in. So he's got two pitches, one that breaks away from a righty, and one that, and there it is again. There's the slider. See the movement appeal to first, and no swing. His, his, the other his fastball sinks and comes into the righty. So he's looking for ground balls. Two two. So Dvorsky you would suppose could be the pitcher of record to the good for Clemson although it could be a situation where if Clayton pitches a number of innings and is effective and ends up allowing fewer than three runs I believe in this situation the official scorer can determine who should be the pitcher of record but 
And an auspicious start to this fifth inning for the guy on the mound for the Tigers. Back to back base hits to start out for the Panthers. Second of the game for Jones. Again, you could say he has not pitched well. Well, he's had two ground balls that have found holes. And that he's a ground ball pitcher. He's throwing that sinker and he throws a slider. Both of them sink. You won't see him up at the st top of the strike zone very much like many of the pitchers we've seen the last two days. Max Ryerson happy to see Caden Grice out of there. Struck out and <laughs> both times he faced the Tiger lefty including the final out recorded by Grice and three impressive innings of work. On well, the national leaders with 22 home runs a season ago. Preseason third team All American. Chopper on the left side. Starbuck couldn't get it. Blackwell does. Runners move up, and that's out number one. Again, another ground ball, which is exactly what Clayton is looking for. And I, and I think that if you were to talk to the Clemson coaching staff, that's what they're looking for. And with that sinker, that's what you expect. Yep. Nice play there. And with that sinker, you know, situationally, he could be used as the season goes on more specifically in, in high leverage situations when they really need, need a, ground, a ball. ground ball out yeah. against a good hitter who might not necessarily be a strikeout candidate. Matt Ruiz, the shortstop, 0 for 2 in this game. 0 for 3 in game one. Last night in the series opener. One for five with a home run. Got a couple home. Georgia State looked like they were cruising to a series opening win when they took an eight to two lead into the bottom of the seventh inning last night. Little did they know what was about to happen. Bottom of the eighth inning rather. Swing and a miss. One and two. Good off speed pitch. And there's he's a Basically a two pitch guy the slider that breaks away and sinks and the fastball that sinks and has arm side run into a right hand right handed hitter ahead in the count one and two right back up the middle into center field that should score a couple that was cut off not sure they would have had a chance to be able to cut down the trail runner Jones anyway. Two run single for Ruiz and just like that the Panthers bounce back. They're back within three. He got that got that slider up. You saw that one about belt high. He needs to keep it down by the knees. My is the third baseman. 0 for two. So just one out man on first now. And that's where he needs to locate that pit, pit, pit there, Pete. It just got to keep it down. He's not a guy that can elevate. We've got several guys in their team with between three and five homers. Bertram at second. On to first. Scored 4-3. Twin killing to close things out for Georgia State here in their half of inning number five. Double play, pitcher's best friend. Second time this season, Mize has grounded into a twin. Hey, so what if we have questions about our policy? And what if it's late at night? And what if someone still calls his mom for everything? At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Hey, mom. Who? Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Same order, same time, every game day. Which means more tips for your dasher, business for your corner store, and just maybe a superstitious boost for your team. Support your neighborhood and your team with every DoorDash order. Come on, Mario! Our big adventure begins now! Oh, I got this. No problem. <laughs> that is a cruel twist of fate. You were gonna help me find my brother, Luigi. There's a human. Do you know him? Do you think I know every human being with a mustache wearing an identical outfit with the letter of his first name on it? Because I don't. Ah! To the biggest fight of our lives. That's a go. Oh! <laughs> Only in theaters.
expires April 5th. We do PG. All right, Gutter, show me what you came up with. Doggone great clearance? No, seen that one. Pawsome sales event? Wow, really? Bonedacious deals? Oh. How do you feel about the Jeep Celebration event? Because right now you can get up to 9,000 off new 2022 Jeep Compass and as low as 1.9% on select new Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram models. Find that and more at Big O under that big American flag on the motor mile. Save a bundle? Now you're just hungry. Ingle, Taylor, and Amick do off of the Tigers here in the home fifth. 8-5 game. Clemson jumped out to a 6-0 lead, but they've seen their advantage cut back to three runs twice now. Ingle front and center in the action. Came through with an RBI single in the second inning. Couple of hits in the double header, seven in the series. Right back out there and hanging tough, Ryan Watson. Giving up eight runs on 11 hits, but his pitch much better than his line would indicate. I agree. And a tough batter to face right now in Engel. And, and they but they just must think he he he's tough mentally. You know, he's given up eight runs, but they they still feel like he's giving them the best chance to post a zero. Six of the runs earned. Watson's ERA at 2.77 when the game began. Engel goes the other way. Over and a little bit in is Strickland for out number one. Will Taylor having himself a fine day. Five batted into the doubleheader in this game. He's homered. Also has a couple of singles. His home run, second of the year, came in the first inning. Two run blast. Tigers put down the marker as they go for the sweep. Taking ball one. Taylor's batting average up to 375. Still the second base of the season in the fourth inning after reaching on a single eventually came home to score. Good cut at that one. Two and one the count. For a game that wasn't originally scheduled not a bad turnout. Yeah. Playing a double header because of the weather forecast for tomorrow. Now, if you have a blanket handy, that was probably a smart idea to bring it along on a chilly day. It has cooled off a little bit, especially since that sun is beginning to descend in the sky. Bit of a cloud cover now. It was gorgeous for a while. Watson exceeding the 100 pitch mark during this at bat by Taylor. And a 2 2 pitch. Bounced up there. And I think that's reflected a little bit. In it. He's, he's dropped in his velocity a little bit his last couple of fastballs. Not significantly, but again, I think it says a lot about him as a competitor that Strombolo would want to keep him in there. Got him to chase the throw. They get a fast man by about a step. Heine kind of took his time. First time the Taylor's been retired in game number two. And it's a second out here in the Tigers fifth. Third time in the nightcap that a Tigers gone down on strikes. Billy Amick having a good game has been on base all three times. A couple of singles a walk and scored a run. When he came across home plate yeah. on Friday night, it was after he had crushed his first Clemson <laughs> homer, a grand slam, and he touched them all 
for the walk off in the 9 to 8 win with joy. 90 miles an hour. Yeah, he's still getting it up there pretty good. On the 106 pitch delivered by senior Ryan Watson. And you know, there was a time where we didn't pay much attention to that pitch count. And I'm not sure it is as important once you get a mature young man, a body that is matured. Now, in, in Little League, you know, kids, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, then I think it's important. But when it, a growing body, I think it's, it's pretty tough. But when a guy's filled out. And Chopper Ruiz to his left. And Amick retired for the first time in game number two. Tigers go in order in the fifth in an 8-5 game. You know, it's really scary. Popcorn with no butter. No, hitting insurance. I mean, what if the jargon makes me feel alone and in the dark? Hey, at State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. <laughs> Sorry. Is that seat taken? Get on up here, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. Most water? Yeah, for my cup of ale. I saw. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. You don't have to believe in free throw superstition for it to work. Because after this many orders on NBA game day, your local wing joint believes enough for the both of you. Support your neighborhood and your team with every DoorDash order. Same order, same time, every game day. Which means more tips for your dasher, just boosts for your team. Support your neighborhood and your team with every DoorDash order. Support your neighborhood and your team with every DoorDash order. Oh, that spin class was brutal. I bet. Hey, can I use Apple CarPlay to put some music on? Sure, it's wireless. What's your Buick's Wi-Fi password? It's uh, Buick Envision. That's a really tight spot. I used to hate parallel parking. Me too. The Buick Envision, built around you, all of you. Get 3.9% APR for five years and no monthly payments for 90 days. Plus, current eligible non-GM owners get 750 purchase allowance on Buick Envision models. Eight five Tigers go to the top of the sixth inning as nightfall begins to descend upon Doug Kingsmore Stadium. We welcome you back. A chilly March Saturday with Ron Smith, Pete Gannity. Tigers took the first game of the doubleheader decisively 10 to 2. Georgia State not necessarily going away though Surely in not. the second game. Something we'll remember from this though, the performance of Caden Grice. Limited opportunity today, a 50 pitch count, but yeah, the nine batters he retired, seven of them went down on strikes. It showed some electric stuff. The you know 91 to 93 mile an hour fastball from that 6-6 six, six, uh, length that he has, and also this big sweeping curveball, very effective, uh, really good outing. Tigers built a six nothing lead in this game number two, but back came Georgia State, top half of the fourth inning, running into one for his third homer on the weekend, fifth of the season. Luke Boynton, a two run blast that came off of the Tigers reliever in the contest, Nathan Dvorsky. And then right after that, Colin Hynek hit a mammoth home run. And then a couple more runs in the top half of the fifth inning as they were able to get a big hit out of Matt Ruiz, a two run single. That was after the Tigers had built the lead eight to three. But Clemson's Will Taylor in the first inning, a two run blast, second home run of the year. They got three more in the bottom half of the second inning. You saw some of it right there. Tigers adding a single run in the third, two more in the fourth, the bottom of the fifth, the only inning that Clemson has not scored in this game. So here's Dylan Strickland, the left fielder. Start things out for the Panthers. And inning number six. He and was he, one of those who went down on strikes against Grice. Last time up, he walked and scored. That was in the fourth. And even though, you know, Clayton gave up a couple of runs last inning, I think they sent him out there because he did what he was supposed to do. He got ground balls. Now, now three of them went through the infield, but he got ground balls. And uh, so that's, I, I think that's really a, a part of that thinking uh, from Jimmy Ballinger and, and, and Eric uh, uh, Backage. First strikeout recorded by the lanky righty out of York. And after seven strikeouts by Grice, 
That's an eighth strikeout of a Panther in this game. And see, that's the pitch he really needs to get, and that was a strike. That was at the bottom of the strike zone, according to Trackman. Tough call, but. Boynton hitting just 250 on the year, but again, a lot of pop in that bat. High chopper. Bertram makes it look easy. Mm -hmm. Out number two. Cole Heineck. Boynton was barely in the dugout after his two run homer in the fourth when Heineck absolutely crushed one yeah. to that one left. Happened. Yeah, that happened quickly. And it, frankly, it. it was not angling so that it could get into the softball stadium or at least up into the concourse, but it probably bounced not far from it. That's how well he hit it out there. That was maybe the longest home run hit at Doug Kingsmore Stadium this season. One and one the count. Now Clayton just if he stays, you know. Down in the strike zone, down near the knees. He's got again the two pitches, the slider and the and the sinker that runs into right handers that's that both sink. There it is. See, that's a good pitch for him. And I know that was just a little bit low, but that's what that's what he needs to do. Freshman out of Paulding County High in Rockmar, Georgia. Colin Hynek swing and a miss. Two and two the count. 85 miles an hour. And Clayton trying to get the Panthers in order. Has the chance. Starbuck at third. Strong throw. Three up and three down in the Georgia State sixth inning. Tigers have an 8 5 lead. You know, it's really scary. Popcorn with no butter. No, getting insurance. I mean, what if the jargon makes me feel alone and in the dark? Hey, at State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. <laughs> Sorry. Is that seat taken? Get on up here, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. Most wanted? Yeah, for my cup of ale. I saw. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. The three for me only at Chili's gets you a bottomless drink, bottomless chips and salsa, an entree like a cheeseburger and fries, the chicken bacon ranch quesadilla, or a steak with loaded mashed potatoes starting at just $10.99. Wait a minute, that can't be right. Rewind. So you get a drink, all the chips and salsa you can eat, a giant entree and a side starting at just $10.99? Oh, someone's gonna get in trouble for this one. This Chili's three for me is the best $10.99 you can eat. Ryan Watson's day is done. The starter for Georgia State. Five innings pitch. A very gritty effort. He really battled. Gave up 11 hits. Eight runs, but six earned. Three strikeouts, two walks, but he was able to save the bullpen a little bit. Yes. And he will give way. He, of course, would be on the hook for the loss. Nick Lohman will stand in all the way from Minnetonka, Minnesota for this left-hander out of the Georgia State bullpen. Big left hander. Third collegiate stop. Played at Missouri briefly and then Northern Iowa Community College. Now here he is with the Panthers. Loman makes his fifth appearance. First battery faces. Riley Bertram. 
Second baseman 0 for 3 in the nightcap. And a two run single and a five run third inning in the doubleheader opener. Hmm. Now, if you'll notice, uh, Loman on his delivery, he's got a bit of a jerk in his head, which is can often lead to command problems and a really hard thing. See that? See that head just jerk a little bit. Two and two, the count on Bertram. Ruiz at short plays the second hop That's and right. sails the throw. Great job by Boynton to pull it down, but couldn't land on the bag. That'll be a fifth error in the game wow. against Georgia State. Well, Ruiz just to see him stand up instead of staying athletic. As soon as he caught the ball, he didn't really work his feet very well, and he stood straight up, and the ball sailed on him. Got to get those shoulders lined up, and you know, and. Again, almost always when guys at this level make throwing errors, it's not a function of their arm. It's a function of their footwork or not staying athletic. Nathan Hall had a big blow in the opening game. Over three, though, in the nightcap. Tiger freshman getting an opportunity in the outfield. <laughs> Boy, five airs for the Panthers is again when you give any team, but it's a particularly a good good baseball team, more than three outs in an inning, it's it's tough to win. And the Georgia State has done that in a number of innings. In fact, the one inning they had three airs, but only gave up only got one, you know, yeah. gave up one run that inning. They were quite fortunate. That was in the third. Tigers really could have broken this game yeah. open then. Runner on the move, swinging a miss Hall. Bertram sliding in without a throw. Really good jump. He got a great read on on Loman. Four of five on stolen bases for the Michigan transfer. Stands at second with nobody out. 0 and two on the batter Hall, looking to add another RBI. And now Bertram on the move. Hit and run, and Ooh. that ball chopped foul. Now Roman really is a bit apathetic about the base runner, especially at second base. And Bertram being a veteran, fifth-year guy, I mean, he says, okay, you don't want to pay attention to me. I'll, I'll steal third as well as second. Steady fielder. Batting average, which is something his head coach really doesn't. Second steady fielder batting average, which is something his head coach really does. Oh, he you're right. He did come in and make an impact on on this club. Tigers trying to add on a little bit here because again, Georgia State a potent team, one of the best power rating teams in the country. Couple of home runs in this ball game. Add that to their season total, which they were pushing toward 40 as a team. They are playing their 16th game. Runner on the move, Bertram. Little flare on the right side, and Boynton gave it a good effort. Surprised he didn't leave his feet there. 34 home runs hit so far by Georgia State. So that's why a team like that you get an opportunity to add some runs absolutely in the later innings. You want to try to be on top of it. Bertram had third base stolen again. Twice there's been foul balls. Hall's been has fouled the ball off but and obviously he can't take a pitch with two strikes. One two pitch gets away. Bertram now at third still nobody out and the count evens on the batter Hall. Wild pitch. <laughs> 
2-2. Lined left center field. Over is Pearson. Runner at third. Bertram tags. Here comes the throw and a sack fly RBI for Hall. And the Tigers lead is again four runs. Well, that was a gift. Then you have the error on the shortstop on a routine play. You, you do have the stolen base, but then a pass ball and then the, the sacrifice fly. So I can promise you the coach Brad Stromdell is not happy about that. Bertram able to come all the way around after reaching on the throwing error. Give Hall another RBI in the doubleheader. Tiger freshman now has six on the season. Caden Grice began the game on the mound, but also in the lineup, so he remains a batter. One for three, the RBI single. And to his second run batted into the year. Off speed, 80 miles an hour. And that's that's the pitch that Caden has to just got to leave that alone. Hitting is hard enough when you swing at strikes. You know you figure confidence can work in many different ways and when Caden Grice the pitcher at six seven goes and stands on the mound. Yeah. Does he have a different kind of confidence a a steadier and more consistent confidence. Than he does when he stands in the plate yeah. and has to figure out what's coming and if he's chasing off speed or not. Ruiz did a nice job playing the hop and that time able to get it across to just get Grice by about a half a step and it's two away. Benjamin Blackwell, they've not been able to get him out since the middle of the first game of this doubleheader. Ruiz been an adventure for him and for that matter those around him in the field. That's ripped well high to center well. field but Pearson back and just shy of the hill puts it away. Blackwell gave it a ride but it's a noisy final out here in the inning. Go to the seventh Tigers lead nine five. This is Antonelli's Cheese Shop, and we're the Antonelli's. We chose our Spark Cash Plus card from Capital One because we earn unlimited 2% cash back on every purchase. And with no preset spending limit, our purchasing power adapts to our business needs. What's in your wallet? You know that moment when you put on a great bra that just makes you feel confident, comfortable, and supported? Yeah, we do too. Shop the semi-annual Intimate Sale. Going on now at Kohl's. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. Like one of our favorite customers, Michelle. I started my own app company, and with Cricket, I'm able to answer calls from my engineers and investors and know my signal's going to be great. If I had to describe Cricket in two words, they would be reliable and affordable. Smile, you're on Cricket. Smile, you're on Cricket. To all the Chevy, to all the Chevy Silverado owners out there, the adventurers and the doers, to everyone who works hard and plays hard, whether it's your first Silverado or your tenth, thank you for making Chevy Silverado the number one best-selling retail full-size pickup. Willie Weiss, fourth Tigers pitcher. Another one of the guys who came south with Eric Backich from Michigan. Originally from Portland, Oregon. On for a second appearance. Already has a win to his credit in a Clemson uniform. Talked to him before the season, and uh, it's just a. <laughs> He, he, his whole disposition is just very laid back, but uh, guy goes from Portland, Oregon to Ann Arbor, Michigan, now to Clemson, South yeah. Carolina. So he's certainly seen the nation. Yes. In his travels. I think he needs a little more bubble gum in his mouth. That seems to be part of his ensemble. <laughs> Tigers getting 
the lead back out to four runs. They open up an early six nothing advantage here in game number two. Yeah, that was a gift. Dalton Pearson starting things out. Yeah. when his coach leaves. So Eric Backage leaves Michigan and he wants to bring a couple of guys with him. He yeah. says something because he knows sure. them and he doesn't have to do that, but he wants to. Yeah. He says yeah. something about them as as young men, not only as, as players, but as young men. Left handed hitting second baseman Jesse Donahoe. Singled and scored in their two run fifth. As a couple of hits came on as a defensive replacement. Late in the opening game of the doubleheader, actually had a plate appearance, it was over one. Rips that one foul. Just beyond Amick. From Columbus, Georgia. Three and one now the count. Well, that's, you know, you a two and one count, and you throw a breaking ball, and it's just not even close. I mean, that was just a, a, a free pitch for the hitter. And a one out walk to the ninth place batter in the order. Cameron Jones, a couple of hits, also a ground out to the pitcher. Singled and scored in the fifth inning. Sitting 294 to start the doubleheader, batting average up to 316. There it is. Top of the zone, one and one. There's the little slide ball that he needs to. Throw a strike with. That time, 84 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Looking for that ground ball. Down by four runs here in the seventh inning. Probably wouldn't have Donahoe on the move. He hasn't attempted a stolen base this season. For a power hitting team, though, Georgia State. Has yeah, run, run more than you oh. would expect. Yeah, it's not like the old days of Earl Weaver, where we're just going to, you know, play for the three-run home run. There, they try to manufacture a run. Engel held on for strike three. Good play by Engel Martin. There's that slider, well located. Jones a little over anxious. Nine strikeouts for the Tiger pitching staff. The starter, Caden Rice, with seven of those, including six in a row. Opposite way. And Ryerson delivering the two out hit, puts him on first and second. Well, that's just really good hitting. He inside out of that ball. Looked like the ball was at least over the middle, if not slightly inside. And you see him inside out that and delivered into the four hole. Obviously, you have. Uh, Amick holding on the runner Bertram cheating a little bit towards second base and a huge hole over there on the right side of the infield. Got to be careful with Ruiz the shortstop. He's got some pop three home runs. Came through with a two run single as that one gets away from Ingle. Runners will move up. Mm -hmm. Last time up. In the fifth inning, the two run single by Ruiz at the time made it an 8 5 game. Tigers getting a run back in the bottom of the sixth. So now, second and third, two away. 
16 runs batted in on the year. For the Miami native who transferred to Georgia State from USF. Engel might have had something in his eye right yep. there. So he's attending to that. Yeah, got to got to be able to see when you're the catcher. And a good block that good time. Job. Remember, Ruiz hit his third homer of the season in Friday night's game. Went 0 for 3 in the first game today. Hey, you get kind of want to challenge Ruiz here. I know he's hit a home run, but. Chopper left side, Blackwell gets it across. And the inning is over. Weiss got in some trouble, but Strands runners on second and third. Seventh inning stretch, 9-5 Tigers. Here it goes. Um, I talk to my plants like they're babies. Hey, you don't need to get that personal to get the State Farm personal price plan. It just helps you create an affordable price. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Life's kind of unpredictable. Like when your groceries arrive, the moment you remember everything you forgot. <laughs> or when your kid says, there's a big so at school tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow? Or when you discover art cootery is a thing you have to try, like now. Or when you could go to the store, but you also need to walk the dog, pack the lunches, and uh... Oh yeah, take the kids to school. You have children. For anything today brings, fresh groceries and more. Free same day delivery. Walmart Plus. Mr. Clark, your daughter is a very good kisser. When you crave the uncomfortable, try new Spicy Pringle Scorching. I did when the mood don't feel right. Wayless, I've been feeling wayless. Look at me, I'll change it right before me. SC Johnson. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. You know I didn't come to play. With America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in three, two, and get away. One, get zero vehicles. Three, two, one, go. Hyundai vehicles. Game two of a doubleheader. They've announced attendance at better than 5,200. Ron, you commented on what a nice turnout we had, especially in game one. A lot of folks for a ball game that was originally supposed to be played on Sunday. Coming back for the second game, 5,242, the official attendance announced. That guy right there, tougher than I, hanging out in a t shirt. It's okay. chilly as it's just about fully dark here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Bottom of the seventh. On for a second inning of work, Loman. First battery faces Max Starbuck, Tigers third baseman, reaching last time up on a hit by pitch. Third time in the game in the doubleheader that Starbuck was hit. We saw Taylor Schultz, the Ooh. new second baseman. What? You don't get that pitch. It's 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 hard to be a pitcher. One and two. I can tell you the Tigers would dearly like to add a couple more runs. Good battle by Starbuck fighting off a pitch. Again fouling it away.
you know, you never know where you're going to have an opportunity. And Starbuck hadn't played a lot the last year or so, and he's got the opportunity here with with the sickness and and you know done a nice job defensively. Come up with a couple of hits here, and Tigers have been winning with him in there. You know. For time a Tiger's gone down on strikes here in game two. First time for Starbuck. We noted three times hit by a pitch in this doubleheader. Yeah. Four on the season. Got he's been getting on base. Top of the order Cam Canarella. Reached base three times in the first game but was hitless. That snapped his 14 game streak but he led off the first inning with a single in this ball game and came home on the two run homer by Will. This ball game and came home on the two run homer by Will. I would not be surprised to see Canarilla taking off early. Third batter that Loman has hit this season. And they're expecting it as well. And as you see the toss over. Four run game, but again, Loman has been told by his coaching staff look, you know, you got to keep it right here. They've got the pop to get back into any game. Well, you saw what happened last night. Cooper Engel, long chase, and no way Mize, the third baseman, could get there. And the left fielder Strickland also gave it a try. Of course, the Tigers, yeah, showing the ability to bounce back. Oh. And mm -hmm. a Georgia State team that Came in here at nine and four and was thinking they had a 10th victory in hand, needed only six outs to get with a six run lead yeah. last night. I mean, that, that game was well in hand. So here they are at nine and six and on the verge of getting swept. That man right there starting to build a foundation, what looks like it's going to be a pretty good program. That's Stromdahl, fourth season at the helm of Georgia State, where he was once an assistant. Guy from Northern California is also coached in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Ooh. Central Michigan University, where mm -hmm. we joked before, as has often been noted about that neck of the woods, that they have two seasons, winter and July 4th. <laughs> and he had to experience a lot of it for a Mid-American <laughs> Conference program. Yeah. That's actually had some good teams. Oh, yeah. Years. I think you know, the tough teams for when you're up there is your first five six weekends you're heading south you're traveling so you're leaving on a Thursday and getting back late Sunday night early Monday morning runner on the move delayed steal Canarell and he's got another swipe second of the double header now nine out of ten Canarella really impacting things with his base running he got a bit of a late Start. Almost looked like a delay and yeah. then a kind of an awkward slide. The throw was going to be wide anyway, but it, I think it would have had it, it would have taken a really perfect Ooh. throw. You know, I'm not sure that Ruiz is, was there on time. If he gets there on time, he should be able to catch that and tag him. Another steal for the Tigers in the series. Now, a man in scoring position for Ingle. One out, count now two and two on the Tigers catcher. He's been behind the play for both games of the twin bill. RBI single in the second. Key RBI in the ninth inning last night. Four batted in for Ingle in that game on Friday night. Hit the big two run home run in the eighth. Uh, and then the two run, or no, the one, the, the single the, uh, in the ninth uh, yeah, to make single. it 8 5. Yeah. On the move, Canarella to third. Doesn't even get a look from the catcher. So I, I, I thought he had a chance to throw him out. And another stolen base for Cam Canarella. He's got 10 on the season. Now and put that ball in play. Get that insurance. Canarella now 90 feet away. Ingle, when he was behind the plate, looked like he had something in his eye, and that time stepped away as if he. Trying to adjust. Full count on the Tigers catcher. That'll do it. On the right side. Good piece of hitting. Only play to first and 
New second base of the game. Schultz didn't get there in time. Boynton had nowhere to throw it. Give Engel yet another RBI in the series. Six on the weekend. Canarella put himself at third with a couple of stolen bases. Tigers build the lead to 10 5. Yeah, I'm not sure that that was. That might have been the second baseman's ball. And Boynton maybe possibly should have just stayed at the back. But you said good piece of hitting. It's a tough breaking ball. All he did was play a little pepper with it, put it in play, and he's got an RBI and a base hit. Loman's night is done. Pitching change upcoming. They will go to the bullpen again. We'll see Brooks Gorman when we come back. Geico has been offering savings for over 85 years. That's longer than the Buffalo Wings been around. <laughs> Lips are burning. <laughs> Geico, over 85 years of savings and service. The three for me only at Chili's serves up bottomless drinks, bottomless chips and salsa, and a classic old timer with cheese and fries for just $10.99. Hey, it's three for me, not three for us. It's my $10.99, it's my three for me. Hey, uh-uh, get out of here. Nope. Ooh, I can whack hands all day. This Chili's three for me is the best $10.99 you can eat. Why is it your grocery order arrives the second you remember everything you forgot to order? Like, without fail. Who drank all the milk? Fresh groceries and more. Unlimited free delivery, Walmart Plus. Okay, I think we're all aware that most cell companies only give you the lowest price when you sign up for multiple lines. But U.S. Cellular gives you just one line for $29.99 with unlimited data. So you don't have to get more lines than you no, need. No, you hang up. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Mm. These cheesy puffs are so cheesy, airy, and puffy. How did you do it? With the Pufferizer 5000, anything can be craveably puffy. Anything? Anything. <laughs> cheese it puff defy your cheese expectations. Fifth appearance this season for the junior Brooks Gorman originally out of Macon went to Tottenham Square High and then to Georgia Southern and here he is at Georgia State run already in in the seventh inning for the Tigers they put up single runs over the past two innings to build their lead out to five runs once more Clemson had an early six nothing lead in this ball game trying to get another sweep on a weekend series. Did so against Binghamton in the opening weekend. Cooper Ingle at first base off the infield hit drove home another run as Canarella came across. And you talked about the impact of Canarella in this ball game. First inning, he gets a base hit, scores a run. Second inning, he, he's on with a walk, scores a run. He's on with, uh, in, in the third, with on an error. And then here in the seventh inning, he's hit by a pitch, steals second, steals third, scores on the field's choice. Or on a base hit, actually. Yeah. But he was active in a game, yeah. one of the doubleheader, in which he had his 14-game hitting streak stop, but still was able to make a positive impact. Ball one to Will Taylor has had himself a good Saturday. Three hits in game number two, including a two run homer, his second long ball of the season. 88 miles an hour, strike one. A couple of singles. His first of those came in the second, driving in a run. That home run in the first inning was pretty impressive for Taylor. Really was. Yeah. Yeah. 
Got him looking. It's out number two. Second time that Taylor's gone down on strikes. First time swinging. This time. Watch that one. Well, that's just Come yeah, right that's on the right inside there. edge. Yeah. Good pitch, a little two seamer. Last time Billy Amick came up to the plate when it was this dark, he was able to rip one. This time, <laughs> a hard shot to Mize at third, who goes the short <laughs> way, and that'll close out the Tigers in the seventh. Clemson adds another run, a 10 5 lead as they go for the sweep against Georgia State. Final four, here we come. Chuck, I hope you're earning double miles on gas with the Capital One Venture Car. Break a break a one, Nana. It's Chuck a truck in the Sweet 16 Wheeler back on the road again. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Is that Willie? The life I love is watching b-ball with my friends. And I can't, I can't wait, wait to get, get on, on the road, road again. again. Ball, ball with, with my friends. friends. I can't wait to get on the road again. Love is watching b-ball with my friends. I can't wait to get on the road again. Next on Behind the Series. In all my years of playing. <laughs> Next on Behind the Series. In all my years of playing. <laughs> that 22 draft was something special. If I hadn't seen it in person, I wouldn't have believed it. Where can I even start? The monster. It was scary good. The outlaw? Come on. The Philly, the Philly had beef with everyone. And by beef, I mean tender, juicy steak. It wasn't just a roster. It was a menu. The Subway Series, the greatest menu of all time. I'm getting home just to, hey, can we take a, hey, can I get a sandwich? Life's kind of unpredictable. Like when your groceries arrive, the moment you remember everything you forgot. <laughs> or when your kid says, there's a big sweat school tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow? Or when you discover art cootery is a thing you have to try, like now. Or when you could go to the store, but you also need to walk the dog, pack the lunches, and uh... Oh yeah, take the kids to school. You have children! For anything today brings, fresh groceries and more. Free same-day delivery. Walmart Plus. Tigers again turn to the bullpen. Lindley on in relief of Weiss as we head to the eighth inning. Eighth appearance for Jackson Lindley. 6'3", 220 pounder, the senior out of T.L. Hanna and Anderson. Did some good work last weekend and mm -hmm. now trying to keep things right where they are. Five run game, Tigers in front as we head to the eighth. Georgia State in the back of their minds recognizing the fact they were up by six runs mm -hmm. when the Tigers That's came up in the, the eighth game, yeah. on Friday night. Clemson winning the first game of the Saturday doubleheader 10 to 2. So when you look at the body of work from a batting standpoint nine runs scored last night of course seven desperately over the final two innings to rally for the win. Ten runs in the first game of the doubleheader and then ten more here in the nightcap. So it's been a really good weekend for the Tiger bats not necessarily hitting the ball out of the park but manufacturing runs agreed guys taking an extra base or stealing bases and, and, the, I, and the pitching in general I mean the bullpen did a wonderful job and relief of Tristan Smith in the first game and, of this doubleheader and last night yeah and and closed the door over the final four innings last night Caden Grice was on a pitch count had he not been, he might have had double figures in strikeouts. Most Ooh. likely would have struck out seven out of, of the, the nine, nine outs yeah. that he recorded. And he faced only a couple of batters over the minimum. Very, very impressive. Three innings of work for Grice. He can't factor in the decision. Well, Jackson, Jackson Lindley, just a, a body of work that's very dependable. You know, I think he's 15 strikeouts, three walks. He just throws strikes. Will Mize fouling it away, 0 and 2. Third baseman for this Georgia State team. One for two. With an RBI. Yeah. Look at that guy. <laughs> now, all he wants to do is take the nook out and, and chew his teeth into yeah. that right there. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. 0-2. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Clemson pitching. That's number 10 after they 
got eight of them in the first game. Good slider. Lindley is a fastball slider guy, a little sinking fastball, and there's a that that one had some bite. Dylan Strickland looking at strike one. He's gone down on strikes twice. Also walked back in the fourth inning, came home on the point and home run. Boy, and now he's in an 0 2 hole. Well, you throw that slider. Really good one, has some bite. The, the, the fastball comes out of the exact same window, looks the same, but instead of breaking down and, and away from the righty, it runs up and in on his hands. Right side, long way for Bertram, and a strong throw to Amick. Two up and two down. Tigers have retired the side in order twice in this game. Now we've talked about how guys get two quick outs and then sometimes falter a little bit, maybe lose a little bit of focus, which was the case back in the fourth inning yep. when they came up with. Nathan Dvorsky got two quick outs right. and he thought he was going to make it a yeah. clean An inning. inning. Yeah. And then, and then he had the walk and then the home run and home run. Another good pitch. 90 miles an hour. But Lindley. Among those you would say Nick Hoffman and Rocco Reed. They were mentioned by Eric Backage in his pregame conversation today. And I would suppose he would put Lindley's work among theirs and others out of the bullpen to the positive this weekend. We pick up the phone because it's ringing. I should get this. <laughs> Hello, this is Sam. How can I help you? That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. Buffalo Ranch. Two titans of sauce brought together in a spicy, tangy, buttery sauce super team. So good, it's not even fair. All new Buffalo Ranch for a limited time at Buffalo Wild Wings. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. You know I didn't come to play. With America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey on every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Get 0% APR financing plus zero payments for 90 days on select Hyundai vehicles. Game recap in the nightcap of this Saturday doubleheader. Tigers a 10-5 lead. Caden Grice, exceptional work on a pitch count. Seven strikeouts in his three innings of work. Will Taylor continues to hit. So does Cooper Engel. And a Tiger ball club that's seen Georgia State commit five errors. And those have certainly helped the Clemson cause. Tigers trying for their first five-game winning streak of the season. But they opened the campaign with four straight wins. Looked like they were on the verge of a loss in the series opener Friday night against the Panthers, the big rally, and then a 10 2 victory in the opener of this doubleheader. Caleb Stewart, we saw him late in game one earlier today. Now he's in left field. He replaces Dylan Strickland. Bottom of the eighth for Clemson. And Riley Bertram reached on one of those five errors his last time up and came around and scored. That was in the sixth inning. Tigers saw an 8-3 lead. Reduced to 8-5 in the fifth inning. When Ruiz came through with a two-run single for the Panthers. But single runs in the sixth and seventh adding insurance. And here we are in the eighth. You talked about being productive. You you look at Riley Bertram's batting average, just 197, and yet he's got 12 RBI. Yeah. And so he's getting it done. Yeah. On and, base and percentage coming into the doubleheader, 327, yeah. and held up against the batting average. That's really good. 
they'd like obviously it to be a little bit higher but again this is a coaching staff that does not focus on batting average there are many other metrics they go by that when you break it down make a lot of sense both these coaches are real big on exit velocity on a 3 2 pitch going to be a long run for both the shortstop Ruiz and the left fielder Stewart and it's Ruiz able to get to it for out number one. Nathan Hall came through with a sacrifice fly his last time up. That was in the sixth inning. Four RBIs in the doubleheader for the Tiger freshman from the Midlands. Also reached on an error and scored on a bad throw by the third baseman Mize. Back in the third inning. Essentially, Canarella has nailed down center field, but oh. it's yeah. a continue evaluation of what to do about left field and right field. When Blake Wright is healthy, in pretty good shape, obviously, in the infield. That's driven high and deep to right center, but backing up on the hill, Jones pulls it in for a noisy out number two. Hall flirted with a second career home run and second on this Saturday. You figure. Amick has shown some good work with the bat. He and Grice, from a righty lefty standpoint, can handle right. first. But yep. right, you know, is going to get back to hitting the way he was in the first couple of weeks. Blackwell has kind of turned things around today at short. You love right. when you get out of Bertram at second. And then Ingle behind the plate. So you're pretty well set and, and, around the infield and behind the and plate. Gerald, it, the freshman behind the plate has been very solid as yep. well. So. Very adequate. Eaton Grice, an RBI in this game. His second on the season. Look, it's always fluid. The se because things happen. People get hurt. Uh, you know, people people get hot. People st struggle, and you have to make changes. And that, that, that's that's a feel for a team that a coach develops over the course of the year. What you hope to achieve is by, you know, two thirds of the way through the season, you've got a really good feel for what guys can and cannot do. And that, that they've kind of settled into roles and they have accepted their roles. 3 0 oh on Grice. <laughs> Take strike one. Close. That's ball four. <laughs> Grace on base for a second time in the game. Benjamin Blackwell, four hits in the doubleheader. Actually, five hits in the doubleheader, rather. Three hits in this game, although retired in a fly ball to center field his last time up. He had five consecutive hits. His last two plate appearances in game one, his first three here in game number two. We talked about just that one hit can get you going again. <laughs> Off speed, you could hear Gorman grunting as yeah. he released that. Mm -hmm. 82 miles an hour. Backhand Ruiz able to get Grice at second to retire the side. Nice shot by the shortstop. First handling a pop fly in the inning, then the grounder. Go to the ninth. Tigers up by five. Auto owners insures your car. Because sometimes something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. Here's a little tip for all you aspiring fishermen. The easiest way to catch wild, humongous, already deeper Arby's bag. Arby's, we have the meat bag. Arby's, we have the meat. Can you hear me calling? Can you hear me calling? Out your name. Oh, 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 oh. I want to be with you everywhere. Arby's.
What if my type 2 diabetes takes over? What if all I do isn't enough? Or what if I can do diabetes differently? Now you can with Once Weekly Manjaro. Manjaro helps your body regulate blood sugar. And Manjaro can help decrease how much food you eat. Three out of four people reached an A1C of less than 7%. Plus, people taking Manjaro lost up to 25 pounds. Manjaro is not for people with type 1 diabetes or children. Don't take Manjaro if you're allergic to it. You or your family have medullary thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. Stop Manjaro and call your doctor right away if you have an allergic reaction, a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, vision changes, or diabetic retinopathy. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis and gallbladder problems. Taking Manjaro with sulfonylurea or insulin raises low blood sugar risk. Tell your doctor if you're nursing, pregnant, or plan to be. Side effects include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, which can cause dehydration and may worsen kidney problems. I can do diabetes differently with Manjaro. Ask your doctor about once weekly Manjaro. Our great crew working in the control room. Let me give you an idea as to how long of a day it's been for them. The gentleman who you just saw second from the right was clean shaven when the day began. That's <laughs> that's how long of a day it's been and all the camera folks out yeah. there. And it's in, chilly too. In many cases by their lonesome working behind the various apparatus that bring you the pictures. And here we are Jackson Lindley on for a second inning of work trying to close this out. It'll be a double header sweep and a weekend series sweep that looked all so improbable going to the eighth inning last night when the Tigers were down by a six little number Starbuck has to make the throw to get out number one. They able to retire the catcher Colin Hynek for out number one here in the ninth. Well, Lindley once again just tying people up with that fastball that runs in on the right hander. Tough little play by Starbuck well done. Dalton Pearson stands in. Mm. Lined out to Blackwell at short his last time up. Has also flied out to center twice. So he's trying to get a first hit here in game number two and in the double header. Boy, oh, just missed. Just missed. Two hits last night. Good looking slider. Lindley again has that fastball 90 mile an hour fastball that runs in on the righty and sinks a little bit and then the slider about 80 that goes away from the righty and they both come out of the same window Pete and it's hard to pick up. Watch out in that Georgia State dugout. Schultz who checked in at second base due up next. Blackwell to his left diving stop fast man running and Pearson beats it out third hit in the series for the center fielder and a one out base runner. Really nice job by Blackwell to knock that one down but it was going to be tough to get the very fleet Pearson. Yeah, Pearson runs well that's the second play that really was well done by Blackwell that just one range to his right in the hole and just wasn't able to throw out the runner on that one going to his left he leaves his feet gets up quickly but Pearson just too fast down the line. Down by five runs with one out in the ninth chances are he'll stay put. Not going anywhere in fact he shouldn't be holding on, holding him on and they're not. Juju Jackson goes the other way on the first pitch that's into left field. Pearson will head to third. Standing safely and Jackson to second. So it's one away, second and third now. For JoJo Jackson, a second hit in the series. They'll credit him with a double. 
That'll be his fourth of the season. Top of the order, here's Jones. He absolutely paid no attention to any of those base runners. In fact, if he wanted to wind up, if he felt more comfortable winding up, it would be advisable, but. Good pitch. Really nice outside corner slider that had some bite. Other one. And just goes foul. Amick couldn't be too aggressive in charging that no. because you certainly don't want to take a hop by you. Everyone would be safe and you'd have a run in. And Panthers would feel even more momentum. To this point, Jackson Lindley, 18 strikes, four balls. Can't ask more of a, of a uh, pitcher. That's called being that. on the attack. Yeah. Couple of hits in this nightcap for the man of the plate, Jones. Gets a piece. Count remains one and two. Well, that was that was belt high and down the middle. Might have gotten away with one there. But again, attacking the strike zone, Pete. Ten batted in on the season. Or the Kathleen Georgia native goes the other way. That's going to get down. Get a couple runs in. Jones makes the turn on his way to second. And just like that, it's a 10-7 game. And now Cameron Jones stands at second base with just one away. 12 batted in on the year for the right fielder. Slider that's up and away, and Jones just Slaps it down the right field line for a two RBI double. And two of the hits this inning have, have been oppo. Threat began when Pearson laid out the infield hit with one away. And now, dangerous batter Max Ryerson. Single was last time up when he went the other way. Yeah, the only guy you're worried about right now is that guy on deck, Ruiz. And again to the right side, bobbled by Bertram, hit the umpire. Yeah. And everyone will return. A little bit of confusion for Ryerson. They're going to send the runner Jones back to second. And it's going to be yeah. scored a single. There was confusion from Ryerson, but it's basically as Eric Backage will come out and simply get have a conversation with the second base umpire, David Pritchett. David Pritchett did not show a lot of agility there. Have to get <laughs> on his case a little bit about that. Oh, right through his legs. <laughs> you know, and it, it, and it caused Bertram to to stop. I think he may have been able to throw the runner out at first base, but Richard threw his hands up in the air. Hits now even at 12. Now the tying run comes to the plate. Back to back singles for Ryerson. Here's Ruiz. And a two run single. Back in the fifth. Takes ball one against Lindley. One for four in the nightcap. 16 batted in on the season. Obviously a huge moment here. He represents the would be tying run. Off speed for strike one, 78 miles an hour. And even more compelling, he's a 227 hitter or so. And you got Will Mice coming up, a 356 hitter. Late on a high fastball. Ruiz with his third home run of the season last night. Okay, the 27th out has come at, he's had a lot of drama the last, well, last night and tonight. The second game, of course. And there's just a offensive timeout to break up that momentum a little bit that Lindley had after getting in front one and two on this on this count. 
Brad Stromdahl with the conversation. The man on deck, Will Mize, has four home runs this yeah. season, so that's another power bat in their yeah. lineup. You look through their stat sheet coming into this doubleheader today, they have one, two, three, four, five, six guys with between three and five home runs. Team that's hit 34 on the year. And I think we're going to get a pinch runner, we will, for Ryerson. David Bell. Catcher from Evans, Georgia, but of the fast catcher variety in this case. <laughs> One two coming to Ruiz. Framed by Engel. Football two. That's a bit outside. Yeah. Ooh. Skied out of play on the right side. One of those games where Georgia State, after falling behind 6 0, would not go away. Yep. Give them credit. They have, they've competed all weekend. Got him. Called third strike. Ruiz tried to hold up. Pitch looked like it was outside, but wasn't even going to be appealed. Home plate umpire made the call. Cooper Ingle was asking for the appeal, but wasn't necessary. So now down to their final out. A two seam fastball and just caught the outside corner. Cooper asking for the appeal, but it was it was a called strike from the um, home plate umpire. 12 strikeouts by Clemson pitching. It's up to Mize. He's the potential tying run. 0 for 4 in game number two. Doa, don't make a mistake to this guy. 1 for 2 with an RBI in the opener of this doubleheader. Chop to Blackwell okay. to second, and that'll do it. Panthers scored a couple in the ninth, made things interesting, but Lindley eventually able to shut the door on a 10-7 Clemson victory. Tigers sweep the doubleheader. They sweep the weekend series. They got a good start out of Caden Grice. I believe the pitcher of record, though, will be Nathan Dvorsky, who relieved him in the fourth inning as the Tigers move on to another win. Improving to 10 and 6 on the season, a five game winning streak, their first of this 2023 campaign. Yeah, never easy to sweep a doubleheader, but timely hitting and solid pitching is a recipe for doing just that. Good day for the Tigers. Georgia State falls to 9 and 7. Tigers trying to build momentum with ACC play about to begin. And part of that, a thrilling come from behind victory from six down in the late innings last night. And then good work by both the pitchers and the hitters in a doubleheader sweep on this Saturday in which the Tigers win both games, scoring 10 runs in each. Great job by our wonderful crew all day here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Thanks so much for being on hand. And on behalf of Ron Smith, Pete Kennedy saying so long, this has been a presentation of ESPN. You know that moment when you put on a great bra that just makes you feel confident, comfortable, and supported? Yeah, we do too. Shop the semi-annual Intimate Sale. Going on now at Kohl's. I save my shrimp tails and jars under my bed. You don't need to get that personal to get the State Farm Personal Price Plan. It just helps you create an affordable price. Oh. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Now you'll never be far from my mouth. I whispered as I bit into the vanilla caramely goodness and gripped the chair. Whew, it hurt like hell, but tasted so good. We hit the road. There was no way to know what would greet us over the horizon. We had everything we could ever need. Our hogs, our lil drums, and the open road. Go, hogs, go, we said. And they did. Another day, another drumstick. When you find your reason to go on, let it pull you past the doubt, past the pain, and past your limits. No matter what, we go on BioFreeze. Ziploc knows there's no such thing as a normal dinner. 
Ziploc silicone and durables are designed to go from freezer to stove to anywhere again and again. Ziploc and durables. Unlock life. SC Johnson, a family company. Unlock life. SC Johnson, a family company. Hi. I'm here for your annual eye exam. Exactly. I'm here because I'm having trouble reading. Exactly. They sort of make me feel... Like I'm the most fabulous thing you've ever seen? Like lightning is running up and down your spine? Exactly. I'll take them. Oh, I'll have another. Make it a double. Who are you talking to? Vincent, my server. He's from San Diego. Dad, Mom thinks she's at a resort again. Yeah, she told me. When you'd rather not resort to a virtual resort... This is much better in real life. It matters where you stay. Looking good, babe. Extra chairs. Oh, thanks, Steve. You're not from San Diego, are you? No, ma'am. Hilton for the stay.